All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about what's involved in building a large scale microservices application. So it all starts with the VPC and the VPC is a virtual private cloud or a virtual private computer. And essentially it is just a computer that is virtualized where all of your application is going to run. So let's model that out now with a, with a VPC. And I'm also just going to add a square here because everything is actually going to go inside of this VPC. So as a developer, the thing that you're probably going to be working on predominantly is the services or the application layer. And this is what is going to house your business logic. So these are different services that you might deploy. So let's say, okay, so let's say that we have a user API. And we might also have a products API. And let's also just say that we have a purchases API, or let's call this orders. So we have the makings here for an e-commerce application. So each one of these services is going to have its own database. So I'm just going to model that out here. So we're going to have a database per service and having a database per service is an integral part of making a fault tolerant system. So the idea is that each one of these applications and its database are a independent piece of the system. So if this service here goes down, then it won't affect these other services here. If these services all shared a database, then it would of course affect these services if any part of this application went down. Okay, so I'm just going to move these services over and their databases because we have another important part that sits in front of these services and that is going to be our web server. Now web server is going to handle requests from the outside world and by the outside world, I just mean from the internet and it's going to send these requests over to our services. So I'm just going to model this here as a server. Now some popular web server technology that you might see is going to be Nginx, Kong, Caddy, and of course Apache. And so the request is going to come in, it's going to get to our web server. So our web server is going to be responsible for a few different things. One, it could be responsible for our load balancing and it could also be responsible for our SSL certificates. So our SSL certificates are typically going to sit on the load balancer. A request is going to come in. So let's model a request here. And that request is going to go through our load balancer here. And then our load balancer is going to figure out where we need to send that request. Do we need to send it to the user API, the products API, or the eight orders API? Okay, so what are our options if we want to communicate between these services? So we have a few different options. One, we could just use HTTP requests. So I could send a request from the user API to the products API, and then the products API could response. And this is a synchronous request. We're gonna have a request and a response. If we wanted to have something a little bit more fault tolerant and something that's async, we could use a message bus. So some popular message bus technologies are Kafka and RabbitMQ. So I'm just gonna model out Kafka here. So this would be our Kafka broker. So let's say that we want to send a message from our user API down to our products API. So we could have our user API here produce a message. And that message is going to go to our Kafka cluster. And then our Kafka cluster is going to be responsible for delivering that message to the desired consumer. Now the benefit of this is that we have guaranteed delivery. So let's say for example, our products API is down. We've produced a message from our user API and we're not consuming that message. We're going to get something called lag. Now, if we get lag, there's something serious going on. We need to fix that problem and we need to get alerted. So we're going to set up some metrics and then off the back of our metrics, we're going to set up some alerts. For metrics, I'm gonna use something called Prometheus. And then for each service, we're going to expose an endpoint called slash metrics. So we're gonna have a metrics endpoint for each service.
And on that metrics endpoint, that service is going to be responsible for publishing some metrics. So on our metrics endpoint, we're going to publish some default metrics. So we're going to publish metrics like our memory usage and our CPU usage. And we're also going to publish some custom metrics. And a custom metric might be measuring the response time of a database request. So you can push metrics to Prometheus, but typically what's going to happen is your service is going to publish the metrics on a metrics endpoint. And then Prometheus is going to be configured to scrape this endpoint. Now you'll also notice that Prometheus and the metrics endpoints all live inside of this VPC. These metrics aren't exposed to the internet because we don't need to expose them to the internet. Okay, so we have some metrics and now we need a way to view these metrics and alert on these metrics. For this, I'm gonna use a tool called Grafana. So I'm gonna have Grafana here. And Grafana is going to use Prometheus as a data source. You can use anything as a data source in Grafana, but in this case, we're going to be using Prometheus. And Grafana is going to be responsible for visualizing these metrics and providing alerts. So we might also have a Slack channel So let's call this Slack and Slack exists outside of our VPC. And then Grafana is going to send our alerts to our Slack channel to notify us of anything that's going wrong with our system. So let's go back to our Kafka cluster and our lag. So we're going to capture metrics from our Kafka cluster. Let's change this to Kafka cluster. We're gonna capture metrics from our Kafka cluster inside of Prometheus. And then we're going to set up alerts from Grafana to send us a Slack message if we have any lag on our consumer. Okay, what about a user interface? All good applications have a user interface. So I'm gonna say my user interface is down here. Make that text a little bit bigger. Now our user interface in this case is just going to be a static web app. So if it was a server rendering app, let's say we're using Next.js, then it would exist inside of our VPC, but our user interface in this case is just going to be a static app. So it's probably gonna live in say an S3 bucket. Now we have one problem here. Our user interface needs to make requests to our services. So when a user logs in, they're going to need to make a request to our user API. They're going to need to make a request to the products API. And then when they want to place an order, they need to make a request to the orders API. Now this can be quite annoying because the user interface is going to have to create a bunch of abstractions over these APIs to transform the data into a usable format. A user interface shouldn't really have to do that. An interface should be responsible with displaying the information. So to solve this problem, I'm going to add another layer here and this is just going to be another service that exists inside of our VPC. And this is what's going to be called a BFF layer or a backend for frontend. Now a backend for frontend is going to be a one-to-one -one coupling. So each backend for frontend is going to be designed for a specific user interface. If we had multiple user interfaces, then we would have multiple backend for frontends. So let's say we have another one here. Then we would have another backend for frontend. And our backend for frontend's job is to transform the data and the request to make it easy for our user interface to use that data. And it is going to make requests on behalf of the user interface to these services that live downstream. So we can make requests to any of these services here. So if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more videos like this, please make sure you let me know in the comment section below and make sure you subscribe with notifications turned on so you get notified whenever I release a new video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.